Welcome to another video, and today I thought we'd start it by having a quick look at my morning routine. First thing, music. Second thing, coffee. Oh shit! <laughs> in the mornings now, if you follow me on Instagram, you will see that I have an entire morning playlist for you to wake up to. It includes three beginning songs to make your lovely, lovely coffee, which I'm going to show you how I make mine now. Then it goes into an Alan Watts featured meditation stage. Just 10 minutes of just centering yourself and giving you that time in the morning. Don't turn on the TV, get on my playlist. Link will be in the description for it. And just give yourself that morning wake up. So music, coffee, and then we start the day. My coffees though, is what a lot of you have been on about. What do I have? It's not complicated, it's not expensive, but it's bloody nice. All you need is a Nespresso Essenza machine, some Law coffee pods, and some double cream and some brown cane sugar. You take a half a teaspoon of the brown cane sugar and you drizzle it succulently over the creme of the coffee. Then stir anti-clockwise three times, then clockwise three times, then randomly anti-clockwise and just once clockwise. Very important, darling, it's very important. Lick the spoon and put it back on the communal sugar pot. Double cream. Now you want the double cream, it's fresh cream, and this is pouring cream. Ooh, Lex, it's full of fat. You're gonna get really fat. No, right? You're gonna use like a teaspoon of this stuff and it works out as like two grams of fat per coffee. That's nothing, even if you're on a low fat allowance. You just a little bit of a cheeky little, ooh, yeah, that's it. And then once again, spoon, anti-clockwise three times, clockwise three times. Random spin to the left and then once clockwise just to slow it down. And that's your perfect blend and trust me, hashtag trust Lex, half teaspoon cane sugar, espresso, tall espresso from Nespresso, and a little bit of double cream. Mm. Smack that up with my playlist, a little bit of Frank Sinatra, a little bit of rock, a little bit of stuff to get your feet moving in the morning, and I guarantee you will have a better day. Oh. What I also like to do in the morning is just give my willy a good shake and a twist. And then my willies, <laughs> ready for my morning ingestion of my apple cider vinegar. Now, the reason I'm taking this is because it is really good for your gut health and digestion. But what it also helps with is if you get kind of sore joints, from uh, your thumbs to big toes, these are problem areas. It can often be a buildup of purines in your system and this helps remove those purines from the bloodstream. So that is another benefit to it and that's why I'm taking it. What you need when you get one of these apple cider vinegar is you need to see it says there with live mother. Mother, like the alien mother. That's what you need. Without that, it doesn't work. What I do to counteract it, because this does not taste nice, right? It is basically vinegar. It's, 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 ba it's not, it's grim, mate. 30 mil of that. Whack it in there, bink. You've got to, you've got to water this down. Just to... That'll do. Now what I found is, you can add a little bit of honey to this, which does work and stir it in. But because I've only got set honey, because I'm not forward thinking enough, I'm gonna use my cherries and berries, sugar free kind of thing, and just give it a little bit of bump. Now this isn't gonna make it taste good, it's just gonna make it palatable. And sometimes in life, not everything that you drink is gonna taste great for you if it's healthy, but, it's like taking a medicine in the morning, but this is a healthy one that is natural. So it's a natural remedy for your morning to help you get going. I would probably have this normally before my coffee. Get out of the way. It, does, it wakes your ass up. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Whew, air out of the way. Ah, health. Oh, the other morning routine is the wonders of being with Gymshark. We get packages quite frequently, so I've got one today. I thought that would be in front of you, because I don't know quite what this is. I'll take it with me. Oh, yes! Any excuse? So, we're getting up to that time of the year where you know that, the, you know the one, the secret word, the Black Friday. It's coming its way, so this is a time to keep your eye out on stuff that you've 
you've, you've liked because pretty much we've been told a lot of stuff is going to go into these sales. Ooh, I know what this is. Ooh, make yourself a superhero. The Onyx from Gymshark. Actually, perfect for what we're going to be doing later. I will be wearing that because later on we are going back to our first BJJ class in like three years. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna suck. <laughs> so that is it for today. We're gonna to be heading over to Black Country Barbell. I'm gonna take you through major errors that people make in the gyms today. So I'm gonna go through five major things that you can adjust in your training to make things immediately better and feel a ton of movements even deeper and get that contraction correct. Mind to muscle and all that jazz. I'm also going to uh, let you in on a little secret when we're at Barbell that's to do with Barbell. There's a little thing going on there. You'll find out about that just a little later on in the video and we'll show you all of that. So, to the car, I believe. Is Black Country Barbell close to where I live? No, it's a 40, 45 minute drive away, but it has atmosphere. It has that inner feeling of when you walk through the door that you're there to work. The lads who work there are cool, the place looks sick, there's proper iron being thrown around and it just has that energy and that vibe. So it's like go 10 minutes away to somewhere where I have to drive my own energy or go somewhere a couple of times a week that gives me energy. And this will go back to the, the last video that we did. If you haven't seen it, link will be in the description, but it's about doing something you love and finding what you love and that's what's going to keep you motivated. Everyone's always on about how do you stay motivated. You have to create an environment that keeps you motivated. And this is part of where we're going here today. So we're going to get back to Barbell and show you how beautiful this place is. So three, two, one, Barbell edit. to Black Country Barbell. Good. Everybody welcome Lou to the channel. So Lou owns the Black Country Barbell, the beautiful place that you just saw and we have been here before. Been here. Well, yeah, quite, quite a few, few, times. Quite a few times. Yeah. yeah. So on the way here, yeah. we're talking about the energy of this place. <laughs> you walk through the door and it's like, oh. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing we get a lot. Um, I think just a combination of like, uh, there's a lot of people here with the same intent of like coming in and training hard. Not coming in, to scroll through Instagram, people in here to work. Yes, work. yeah, exactly. And it's infectious. Covid's infectious. We don't want that infection. What we do want is the infectious energy of a gym that makes you want to get in and work. And to add to that, some more exciting news. Tons of you have been asking me to relaunch the podcast, and I promised it, and I promised it, and then I sat down, and then I sat down, and I didn't get back on. <laughs> but not anymore. That's why I'm here. This is why I lose here. We decided that why not. We, we bounce off each other just generally when we're here. I come down and train for an hour and talk for seven. Yeah, <laughs> literally. I don't know, I think you're being a bit generous with <laughs> yeah. that. Well. But the stuff we come out with is so, it, it's so funny and I leave here just feeling elated and just happy just with the nonsense we've talked about. And we thought, why not share the nonsense? We are both children though. We are so. giant children and why not put that on a camera and in people's ears? We are relaunching the crew cast, but it's going to be me and Lou and guests every so often when we can get them in, yep. and it will be every week, and we're gonna start recording from next week. Yes? Yeah. It's a plan. deal. That's the plan anyway, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. So with that said, let's crack on with a little bit of education. Class is in session. So we told you today I'm gonna to be going through some of the major points in the gym that you people, you people, that's accusing, isn't it? That some people, or a lot of people, do, and I'm not saying it's, it's done intentionally, but these are common problems that we see that maybe you're not picking up, but are definitely hindering your progress. Number one, we're gonna be looking at symmetry of the body. This is hugely important. So many people in the gym get a little bit sidewinded by the mirrors to the left, mirrors to the right. You just want to be stuck in the middle with you. <laughs> oh. Badoosh! 
Keeping your head in a straight line down the middle, keeping it on centre is hugely important. I'm going to take these off, they're giving me a bit of a headache. Because the body wants to go where the head goes. And in the same theory, if you're lifting and looking off to one side, I guarantee your body is going to start slowly twisting towards that side. It might not be a lot, but it's enough to start causing a difference from left to right in the way you're lifting, especially if you're on a bar, if you're doing deadlifts, if you're doing upright rows, anything like that, keep your head straight, pull evenly and focus on the lift, not your reflection. In line with the symmetry, get my notes. Machine position, this is one I guarantee a lot of you are not even aware of. When they position machines in the gym, if they are not perfectly in line with the wall in front of you, if they're slightly off, I guarantee you will lift to the nearest perpendicular wall to you. So you'll naturally twist off towards the wall. So make sure that when you set yourself up, you look at which way the bench or whatever it is you're sitting on is facing and you keep yourself within that alignment. That's just a sneaky little one, but I guarantee you'll notice it now when you go in the gym. So give that one a go. Final symmetry one. Happy feet. Happy feet. Whenever you're lifting, you want to make sure that your feet are parallel and even, especially on things like bench press. You'll notice that people will sit on the bench with one foot quite cocked off to one side. This now is not an even drive. Happy feet as well, dancing little feet instead of being planted into the ground. These are all massively important and they're gonna really affect the way that your lifts have power and drive and control. So making sure that your feet are parallel, even and balanced, very important. Teaching point number two, over or under extension. Yes, we all know what this is, but you probably aren't realizing it, especially when it comes to biceps. The bicep curl, you'll see a lot of people not going full extension on the negative, allowing the elbow to kick back and deload the bicep. The reason the body is doing this is because it's the easy way for it to move the weight from point A to point B. So you have to stop thinking about just shifting the weight and start thinking about lifting the weight. It's not easy. Weightlifting does not make sense to the body. It makes no sense for your body to lift a weight with isolated muscles. That's not how we're designed to function. So the bicep one, avoid letting the elbows kick back. Make sure that you're allowing full extension and keeping that elbow joint in a fixed position. Another side note as well, try not to round off the shoulders. Keeping those shoulders in place and allowing full extension is what's going to help you. What is overextension? Overextension is actually quite admirable. It's you trying to do too much. So when you see people on a chest press and they'll be reaching too high, pressing too far, which causes the chest to dip and the shoulders to come forward. On a lat pull down, pulling past the point of the back contraction and moving into shoulder, forearm and other kind of muscular movements just to get that bar lower because they think the further the better. This is not the case. With weights we have ranges of motion and you only need to stay within those ranges of motion to get the benefits. More is not always better. Point number three, being negative is not always a bad thing. Yes, we're talking about the negative part of reps. This is one of the most missed parts of people's training. In its half of your training, Every time that weight moves, it has to come back and the control on the return is massively important because not only does it add to your development gain and control, but it also sets you up for the next good lift. Without that setup, you can guarantee that every rep after every rep is going to be in error and not as efficient as it could be. Hence, you're hitting plateaus whilst the weight's still going up because the weight might be going up, but the work you're doing isn't. On movements, we're not letting the weights snap back. We're not letting them fall back and then bouncing them back up. And we see this throughout tons of exercises like biceps, back and chest. So there you go. A simple one where being more negative will help. Number four, letting your ego take control. The ego, it can be your friend or it can be your foe. And in this case, what we see a lot of the time is people thinking that when they go to the gym, People are looking at them, so they're going to try and lift heavier than they can because their ego says, Hey man, you should pick up that big weight because that big guy's looking at you. When really what you should be thinking is, I don't care who's looking at me, I'm going to do this right. I don't quite know why we have sock puppets doing this. We want to listen to this one and not this one. And ego rolls in from the last point I made about letting it snap back. A lot of the time, we can't control the negative because the weight we're lifting is simply too heavy. So start controlling the negative and finding what your real weights are. 
Do not start curling 20 kilos on a bicep and then expect to see gains when you're bending your back, you're throwing your elbows forwards and backwards, you're not doing full extensions. Same on chest that you may be twisting it up, it's coming up unevenly, your hips are popping off the bench. If you can't do it strictly, you can't do it. Simple as that. Kick your ego in the nuts and start making proper gains. And last but not least, Euro training. Now if you don't know what Euro training is, just search Terry Crews Euro training. And it's basically when people are making up movements or overcomplicating something. Listen, you have not just found the magic formula for massive muscle gain in two weeks. You are not smarter than a hundred years of bodybuilding development. Do the basics and do them well. Stop trying to do daft, crazy movements that you think are working something they're not. If it's not solid, if it's not basic, if it's not in the handbook of compound movements, ignore it. Start with the compounds, start with your bench press, start with your dumbbell press, squats, all the basic solid movements that are gonna give you a strong foundation from which to work. Then once you develop that mind to muscle control, from there you can start adding in slight rotations and slight movements that are gonna benefit the range of motion of the movement. Take a look at my last video if you want to look at how to develop your shoulder health during a chest workout. There's a lot of rotational movements in there that I talk about and one to really look at is called the Poliquin Press. It's movements like this that are really gonna help you still get that burn and that deep pump that you want from an exercise, but also in turn benefit your mobility and joint control. So there you go, hopefully that's some little tips and tricks that you can implement right now and go and feel the difference from your workouts. Maybe catch those little errors that have been causing you to plateau. If you've got any questions, as always, make sure to hit me up in the comments section below. I do get in there and I do answer your questions. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram and hit me up in the DMs there. If you're feeling a little bit shitty during COVID, hit me up. I spend an hour every day going through messages on there and replying and hopefully sending a few positive vibes your way because you're always sending them my way. So thank you very much. And now I'm going to go hit this workout and I hope to catch you in the next video. Back, 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 back. Forgot to mention, if you have not seen the Crewcast already, there were a good few number of episodes put out. I am going to launch its very own channel. So that will be up by the time this video is running. So check out the Crewcast channel. The link will be in the description. It will have all the previous episodes in there with interviews with like David Lade, Matt Ogus, those are the Gymshark people, and just some other helpful, handy podcasts that we did on, on topics that you guys picked. So enjoy. Right, now I'm going to go work out. Bugger off.